Today, we're gonna make you a hero by showing you how to guarantee tri-tip perfection. This is a tri-tip. Tri, because it's in a triangular shape. I'll show you in a minute where it comes from on the cow. Arguably one of the most flavorful cuts of meat on the entire animal. I'm not kidding. I think if you looked up beef flavor in the dictionary, there'd be a picture of that. But I'm gonna show you how to cook this so it's perfect and extremely delicious. But we need to trim it a bit. There's a little bit of fat on here. You can buy them trimmed, which is more expensive, or untrimmed. In my case, it's what I bought. I'll show you how to trim this so you can make a decision on what you want. Here we go. So using a sharp knife, you wanna get rid of most of the fat because you don't really need it. Well, leaving some is, is quite acceptable, but like these pieces here, this kind of stuff you don't really need, right? Like that. I'm trying to do this angle towards max and it's difficult. Just trying to clean it up a bit. Look, I always say this fat is flavor, but there's times when you don't want the entire thing to be fatty. So get, get some of these pieces off right here. This is a good sharp knife. I've talked about it before. If you don't have a good sharp knife, just freaking get one. And I don't mean go buy a new one if your knife is dull. What I mean is take your knives and have them sharpened. That's what you need to do. It's just a little bit like this kind of stuff. I'm fine with that. But now if we turn it over, you see what's here. There's a lot. So take your time. Don't cut yourself. I'm already concerned about that. So there you go, right? It's nicely cleaned up. You're happy with it. Still a tiny little bit there. Let's check this out though, because what's interesting is this was $6.99 a pound. So let's see how much, and the whole thing was, we can do some math here. So it was three pounds. So I took off a half a pound. The difference between trimmed and untrimmed is uh, like three bucks a pound or two bucks a pound. It's worth it to buy it untrimmed and then trim it. If you have a good knife, if you don't have a good knife, go get the damn thing sharpened. So we're gonna go simple. Little neutral oil. You know, I'm a fan of uh, avocado oil. Do that both sides. Not a lot. Just enough that will help our salt and pepper stick beautifully. And it's a fairly thick cut of meat and you want to season aggressively. All the way around the sides, the edges here. Backside, the backside, <laughs> I meant the bottom. Backside, forget it. Lovely, right? So now let's swap this out for here. And look, if you did not have a roasting rack that, that raises whatever it is you're cooking off the deck of the baking sheet, uh, you'll, you'd be fine. But, but I do think that these are pretty good. We'll put a link in the show notes. Okay, so we've got the meat perfect. It's trimmed, it's seasoned, and now we're gonna cook it, but to guarantee perfection in cooking, here's what I'm using. A probe thermometer that comes with one of these guys that sits inside the meat while it cooks, comes back to this when it gets to the temperature you want. It tells you there is no guesswork. We're gonna cook it at a low temperature that will guarantee perfection, top to bottom, side to side, end to end, and wall to wall pretty much covers everything inside a tri-tip. So we go like this. We take our probe, we insert it into the thickest part of the tri-tip or whatever it is you're cooking. We'll go all the way in. Try and make sure you go in horizontally because if you go down or up, it could poke through and that will just screw up everything. And then we take the end that we have right here. I'm trying to do this with one dirty hand and one clean hand. Okay, we plug it in, I hit on. And now we want to set our temperature. Can you see that, Max? Mm -hmm. Let's just bring it down. Oh, shoot, set temp, sorry. There we go. We're gonna go at 128. 128 is our temperature, that's what we want, okay? Uh, 132, if I miss the 128, will be our high number. And now we take this, the whole thing goes in the oven. And then she goes. 
And now this guy sits right here. And we wait. Look, currently 47 degrees inside the tri-tip. Not for long. So here's the thing. We cook it at 275 degrees. The relatively low number lets it cook evenly all the way through, giving you a perfect tri-tip or steak or roast, whatever, when, when it's done. We'll pull it out. The only thing it'll need at that point is a little uh, searing to give it some color and some uh, little texture on the outside. We're gonna make a sauce to go on top, but let me show you where it comes from first. Let's go to the board. Here's our cow. <laughs> Let's make him happy. We have a happy cow. Look, the chuck comes from here. Down here is the brisket, the ribs, the sirloin. This little torpedo piece in here is the tenderloin. And it's so tender because it's protected. It's not near any moving parts. It's protected by the sirloin and the flank down here. Here's the round, the bottom round. And this little thing right here is the tri-tip. There's two on an animal, one on each side. It's a really common cut in, in California. Really common cut. Uh, what they call it in other parts of the country, I don't know. I've had conversations with people that don't really understand it. So if you're not uh, in a place where you can go readily buy a tri-tip, you should ask your butcher um, for it. They'll know what it is. They might just call it something else. You might already know this, but if you don't know it, I'm telling you, relatively inexpensive, super delicious, beefy all the way through, but we're gonna make a little thing. Jesus, look at I just noticed sitting here. That's horrifying, half a pound of fat. Remember Oprah did that show where she lost like 67 pounds and she brought a 67 pound bag of pure like fat out with her onto the stage? Disgusting. Oprah, sauce time. We're at uh, 97 degrees. That tri-tip will ultimately take about 45, 50 minutes-ish at 275 degrees. I don't know what your oven is, if it's calibrated, if it's not calibrated. If you dial 275 and you only got two and a quarter, then it's gonna take longer. But because you have one of these guys in, all that matters is that it's ready when it's ready at the temperature that you want. Okay, but we're gonna do this little, so this, came, this recipe came about because uh, my youngest came for dinner the other night. I cooked a tri-tip and I wanted to put something on top and I did this, little green onion, garlic, olive oil thing, so we'll do it now and you'll, he liked it, I liked it, hopefully you'll like it. Cool, so green onion, diced, like that. Parsley, about the same amount. Curly parsley. I want this garlicky, so I'm gonna put like three cloves of garlic in here. Lovely. Olive oil. So, and I think this is gonna end up being maybe like a third of a cup. I want it like, you know, drippy. Red pepper flake, a uh, quarter teaspoon, something like that. Kosher salt and pepper. The last thing, just a little splash of Worcestershire. About a teaspoon, and we mix. Mm. Can you imagine just some of this? Just dumped on top of that steak. And now we wait for the steak to finish. We're about 25 degrees away. It goes pretty fast. It goes slow in the beginning, then pretty fast. Hey, by the way, you wanna support uh, our channel? Go down below, go down below. God, look below. Look, look in the show notes and buy some uh, Make America Cook Again uh, merch. It's an easy way to uh, say, we support you, Sam, Max. It is. Plus, you're waiting for the steak to get ready, so you got nothing else to do right now, right? Just hang out with us. In fact, Max is, here, give me. We can do this. He, he doesn't trust me to do this. Ma oh, jeez, it's heavy. Careful. There, Max is wearing one right now. How do you, God, what the f***, hold on. Or do you have push to do this the with the- trigger up, push the button, the joystick Where's the buttons, up. hold on. Oh, you, the one you're looking Sorry. at? The one you're looking, at, no, no, now you're not Here? looking at. Here? No, there's Sorry. a joystick. On oh, the, the joystick, side. oh. Yeah, there you go, that'll push oh, it up. Oh, look at there that. There you go. Wait, hold on, let me see, we'll open your jacket. Take it off. There you go, make America cook again. And there, make America cook again. Hey, this is badass, wait. Careful, don't Can use all in the face of it. 
down, 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 down. down. Yeah, there you go. Oh! What do, what do I need him for? I could just do this whole show by myself. Hey, it's uh, Sam, and today we're going to make a tri-tip. Look, I've got it down here in the oven. Oh, it's, oh, it's heavy as shit. Take that back. <laughs> That's awful. We're a few degrees away. In that time, I'm doing two things. I'm heating a cast iron pan because I need to sear this on the outside to give it some color, some crust, a little texture, and make it freaking gorgeous. But I'm also warming. <laughs> Watch this. Hold on. I don't need to look. But I'm also but I'm also warming some mashed potatoes. By the way, have you seen the movie? Was it Bird Box? Bird Box, have you seen it? Started out great, and I thought it just went downhill really quick. I didn't dig it. I watched the whole thing. But there's this bird box challenge. Shit you can do blindfolded. People putting on makeup and whatever. Max texts and he goes, hey, let's do a blindfolded cooking segment. I go, I'm in. Two seconds, that's all it took. I go, I'm in. It has nothing to do with that shit movie. It has everything to do with, let's have some fun. I can cook. I know my kitchen well enough. Might be a disaster, but it might be great entertainment. It might be fun. Who knows what I can do blindfolded. Anyway, these are old mashed potatoes from the other night, two nights ago. They do not look that appetizing. They're dry and stuff. Ooh, ooh. Who wants that? So we're going to heat them up. Ah, shite. We're going to heat them up. Then we're going to add a little bit more of the uh, green onion into this. Jazz it up a bit. It's going to be good. We have four degrees. Four degrees over there. Okay, let's do the mashed potatoes first. Come on. So look, they're, they're dry and they're lifeless. Not very exciting. So let's fix that a little bit. Little heat underneath. We're going to give it a little squeeze of olive oil. That will add a little richness and a little much needed moisture. So here we go. You just mix. Look, they're better already, honestly. Better already. And now some of the green onion. Oh, what the hell. Put it all in. Certainly can't hurt, right? That's pretty, right? A little bit more of the oil. And perfect. Turn the heat down a bit. Let them sit there. They're going to be good. And now for the steak. All right, we're there. Okay, turn this off. Turn this off. There we go. Okay, let's get this out. All right, here we go. And, oh boy. There is nothing exciting looking about that, is there? Let's take out the probe. Oh. Let's put it there. It, and I like the fat. I like the little bit of the fat striations through this. It's really nice. But now we have to give it some gorgeous color because that's what it needs. We're going in this big cast iron pan right beside us. So here's what we have to do. We have to turn on the fan because it's going to smoke like crazy. And then it goes in. And this is the top. I like the top to go in face down first. Here we go. We're just trying to give it color all the way around. It's cooked perfectly inside. Why am I yelling? Because the fan is loud. It's cooked perfectly inside. We just want to give it a gorgeous outside to go with it. And it won't take long. Look at what we've done already, right? So if we give this more than, you know, 45 seconds, a minute on each side, we're going to overdo it. And we don't want to. But because it's not completely flat, i got to work on the edges a little bit. And down we go. And if you could smell the way it smelled right now, it, you think that you were in a, a great steak restaurant. I like the sides done too. I like the ends done. I like the sides done. If you skip this step, you'd be making a mistake because this is adding a lot of flavor. So just use your tongs, maneuver it to where it needs to be. So it gets even color. And when you like the way it looks, which is almost now, you take it off, 
And you cut it. Look how pretty she is. Or he, I don't really know what you would call a tri-tip. And so we should, I suppose, cut into it. And look, you want to cut against the grain. Oh, geez. That's why you have a, a cutting board with a little moat for that. Go ahead. So you can see the grain runs this way. We talked about it before, right? Like this. You always want to cut against the grain because it will shorten up those fibers and make everything much more tender. And, it, and a tri-tip can be a little, a little tough, but not for us today. Here we go. Okay. Just if there were angels that could sing right now, that would be the right thing because this is what I promised and what I delivered. Perfect, medium rare, top to bottom, side to side, and end to end if I made one long cut. You would see it was like this the entire way. And look at this piece right here. Look, th this is, there's no magic, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly what we've just done. So we should have one little bite just because we can. And look how juicy it is. Oh my gosh. That is beef. Capital B, capital E, capital E, capital F. That tastes like beef. But don't forget, we've got our little garlic, green onion, parsley thing in the potatoes. So let's do this the right way, shall we? Let's cut some and then plate it really beautifully. We get a couple pieces here. Here we go. So potatoes first, a little bit like that. Now a couple slices of our tri-tip, like that. And then the perfect accompaniment is that. Wow, green onion, garlic, little red pepper flake. That is gonna be fantastic. OMG. Knife, fork, let's just get a piece. You need the mashed potato, you need the steak, and you need some of that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Some guy accused me of trying to be like a porn star when I ate. <laughs> People are so funny. It's just freaking tremendous. Mm -hmm. Try tip. Forget all the other stuff. This really, that kid, that's the star of the show. Oh, sh**. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned that through the use of a lower oven temperature and a probe thermometer, you can get absolutely perfect results for any kind of meat you're cooking. That's one. Two, we've learned that a little garlic, olive oil, parsley, green onion thing uh, combined to make a magnificent topping. And three, we've learned that, well, there might not be a three. So I'll just say thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, check out everything we put in the show notes, probe thermometer stuff, the rack to raise your food up on a, on a, a baking sheet. Um, like, subscribe, comments, and don't eat shitty food because there's no reason to. Promise.